Greetings, everyone. It is the Ambassador. Got with, back with a brand new work video. And today we're going to discuss the Schumacher cut of Batman Forever. And for those of you who follow me on social media, on Twitter and on uh, Discord and on Instagram, I uploaded the clips of uh, the Snyder Cut, of the Schumacher cut of... Um, or at least what I hope would become the Schumacher cut of Batman Forever. Now, I know I recently covered this uh, movie on an Afternoons of the Ambassador uh, live stream and everything, but I wanted to revisit this because, honestly, I finally got to watch the deleted scenes and alternate cuts of Batman Forever. And, oh my word. Oh my lanta. Holy rust of metal, Batman! Sorry, I had to do it at least once. <laughs> But I got to watch these deleted scenes and it got my mind to working and saying, what could we have gotten in terms of a darker version of Batman Forever? And I will include the links to those deleted scenes or anything, at least the ones I'm going to talk about here or anything in the description. Because there are two or three deleted scenes that are all alternate openings and closings that I really want to focus on here. Um, one is actually is an alternate opening for Batman Forever. There is a scene later on, I think it's after the assault on Wayne Manor by uh, Riddler and Two-Face, and then there is a, uh, there's an alternate ending or extended ending for um, Batman Forever that I, wanna, that I wanna look at as well. Actually, no, there's one other. It's right after uh, Dick Grayson uh, is brought to Wayne Manor that I want to talk about as well. And then I'm, I want to give my thoughts on what this could mean for a Schumacher cut of Batman Forever. Even though Joel Schumacher is no longer with us, I would hope someone in his production company, if he had one, or somebody would just go to WB and say, hey, or Warner Brothers and say, hey, I want to do this. I want to do this alternate cut if it has not been done. Because I would like to see this alternate version of this, of uh, Batman Forever that Joel Schumacher did. Now, the first, the first um, deleted scene or alternate opening that we have is actually an alternate opening that opens on Arkham Asylum. And you are introduced to, um, oh, Dr. Burton. <laughs> Which was a little gag, which was a little uh, uh, gag and everything that they included, played by the late Rene Ojibin was and everything. And he's walking down this hall, and it's all very dark and very austere. And there's lightning flashing; it's storming outside, and everything else. And there's a guard outside of Harvey Two, uh, two uh, Harvey Dent slash Two Faces cell, and. Just the just the just the changing in lighting and muting everything down, and having it just be lit by intermittent light and lit by the lightning that's being simulated. And the guard said, uh, Burton asked the guard that's outside, "Where weren't there two of you?" And he's like, "Yeah, the other one's inside." And Burton goes into Two Faces' cell, and he is. He's like, Counselor, Mr. Dent, Harvey, Two-Face, and then he finally walks up to this figure, and it's the other guard. The other guard has been subdued, and Two-Face has um, escaped from Arkham Asylum. And you see a lightning flash, and over on a wall, scrawled in paint or blood or whatever, says, The bat must die. And when I saw this scene, it just completely blew my mind. Because if you can, if you compare that to the original opening that we get with Batman Forever, it sets a very darker tone. Which I would have, I would, you know, I love Batman Forever. Most of you know this. I love the, I love the original theatrical cut of Batman Forever. It's one of my favorite movies. But this sets a different tone, and I think it. I think what Schumacher was trying to do and everything was kind of follow the same thread of doing a darker tone like Tim Burton did with the first with his first two Batman movies, you know, Batman 89 and then Batman Returns. But honestly, this just this one scene 
drastically changes the entire mood of the film. And then, you know, there's a, there's a scene a little bit later on and everything. Uh, it's right after Dick, like I mentioned, Dick Grayson's family is brought to, or Dick Grayson is brought to Wayne Manor and put under Bruce's care or supervision or whatever way you want to talk about it. And there, um, Dick is in a, um, an exercise room or a workout room and he's going up again, he's punching a uh, fighting dummy or whatever and he's got a, a, a newspaper clipping of, of Two-Face or anything plastered on it and he's just, he is absolutely wailing on this picture because this is how, if you, for those of you who remember, Two-Face was responsible for Dick Grayson's family dying at the circus. And there's this exchange between Bruce and, uh, and Dick and everything. And Bruce is trying to bridge a gap with Dick. He's like, hey, you want, he's like, you did a good job on the Black Knight. You want to grab a couple of Harleys, go for a ride? And Dick's just like, he's completely, he keeps rebuffing him. Every time Bruce is trying to reach out to him, Dick's like, I want nothing to do with you, dude. I appreciate what you've done for me, but he's like, I want nothing to do with you. I, I can't learn anything from you or anything else. And Bruce lines up with the, the fighting dummy. I'm guessing they used a, they used a, a, a double and everything, a, uh, and everything to do this kick. But Bruce completely kicks the top of this fighting dummy off and he walks up to Dick and he's like, you might be surprised what you can learn from me. And obviously this is gonna lead later on into, I think this is a nice character moment and everything for Bruce and for Dick, just trying to deepen their connection and everything and trying to show Dick, hey, this guy has gone through the same thing you have, you just don't know it. But moving on, um, the next scene that we get is, like I said, after the assault on uh, Wayne Manor by Two-Face and by Riddler, and it's after they've kidnapped uh, Dr. Mer they've doctor kidnapped uh, Dr. Meridian and they've kidnapped, kidnapped uh, Dick Grayson. Or, no, I don't think, they, no, they didn't, yeah, they did, they did, my mistake. Um, no, wait a minute, they incapacitated Dick, they didn't capture him until they, him and Bruce got to the island. They kidnapped Dr. Meridian, beside the point. But, um, Bruce is down in the back cave that's been completely demolished by Riddler and Alfred's with him. And they're having this continuation of a conversation. For those of you that might remember, it was a conversation that Bruce had with uh, Mer uh, Meridian, talking about his past, talking about the death of his family and everything, and why he became Batman. And Alfred's like, if you don't face whatever it is that's, what's down here, you're never going to be whole. You're never going to be able to move forward. And Bruce goes into this very darkly lit cave and everything. That it's a smaller alcove of the back cave, and he's got that red ledger and everything that belonged to his father. He's sitting there, and they've got just a single spotlight and everything, or whatever, shining down on him. I guess it's just to simulate a light from just coming from somewhere outside of the cave. And then you see, you hear the music swell, and then you see that silhouette of the bat start to come up and everything, come out of the light. But here's the interesting thing. Now they used that footage and all. But um, there's a further there's a further cut of the scene because the bat just keeps closing in on Bruce and Bruce is just standing there. And what you see is that it's this giant anthropomorphic bat. I mean, it looks good. You can tell it's like fake, but it's a really good it's a really good animatronic. I will say that. Or anything, I'll put it that way. And it sort of, sort of represents all of Bruce's fears of when he fell down into the cave and he was just completely swarmed and surrounded by bats. And he finally realizes why he adopted the image of the bat because it was fearsome. It was terrifying. It was it instilled fear. And... It almost reminds me a little bit of the scene and everything in Empire Strikes Back. And I think that might be that might have been Schumacher's inspiration, maybe just a little. Um, where Luke goes down into the cave there on Dagobah and confronts the the Force illusion of Vader. 
or anything, that might have been Schumacher's inspiration. If that's the case, hey, Joel, if, you, if you're hearing this from the great beyond, thumbs up, my friend. And, if, and then Bruce emerges from the cave and uh, Alfred says, Master Bruce, are you okay? He's like, Alfred, it's Batman. I'm Batman. Because there's an exchange and everything just before he goes into it. He's like, I don't know why I gave up being Batman. And Alfred's like, he did it to save Dick Grayson because Dick was wanting to follow you. He's like, but you need to confront this. And there's actually, there's one more scene I do want to bring up. I just, it, it just popped into my head. Um, Bruce is there in the back cave and everything. And this before the assault. And I think it's right after uh, the whole confrontation between Batman and Two-Face there at the big charity ball, at the big ball and everything that um, Edward Nigma Riddler holds and everything. And you've got this TV commentator just go completely ranting and everything. And it's kind of a, a justified rant, but it puts this question in Bruce's mind. Who am I and why am I doing this? I think also that would have been a very nice touch or anything. It could have kind of tied those lines of dialogue and everything towards the end during towards the end of the final confrontation between Bruce and between Batman and the and Riddler and everything. And I'll include that clip as well and everything. I'll make sure to put it in, in the description so y'all know what I'm talking about. But there's one more, and then I want to get into my final my final thoughts. Um. Meridian is riding with Alfred in their limo or whatever, and she asks Alfred, does it ever end? Does this ever end? And Alfred looks over his shoulder, and he's like, no, no, Dr. Meridian doesn't, at least not in this lifetime. And you, and you see that look on Meridian's face, realizing she may not ever be able to have a normal life with Bruce. And I think, honestly, that ended the movie on a very... Well, granted, it was a downbeat. But I think the overall tone of Schumacher's idea for this for Batman Forever was more downbeat. Because Bruce is wrestling with this question of, who is he? Is he Batman or is he Bruce Wayne? And he finally, you know, he realizes... When he says to Riddler, I had to save them both. Because I am Bruce Wayne and Batman, now and forever. But, you know, to get my to get my final thoughts on this, would I love to see Schumacher's original vision for Batman Forever? Of course. I mean, as I said, Batman Forever is one of my favorite movies and everything not just superhero movies but it's in like it's in my my like my top 10 of well top 20 favorite movies of all time because one it has a sentimental um attachment for me but also i thought it was a great batman movie it kind of tied back to burton's vision but it also brought a little bit of that goofiness and campiness from the adam west era but it did it i think i think it did very well now, I know a lot of people have had their criticisms, and all criticism is justified. You can, you're can, you allowed to have your criticisms of the film. No film is perfect. But I would still love to see Schumacher's original vision before Warner Brothers came in and started monkeying with it to make it more kid-friendly. I, I would love to see a more mature, or as I say in my thumbnail, through a mirror darkly. See this darker version of Batman Forever. So, because we're getting the Snyder Cut, I hear we're going to be getting the air cut of Suicide Squad. I may even go check that out when it comes out. I'll be more than happy to. I'm a, you know, most of you know, I'm a fan of, of uh, comic book movies, superhero movies of all kinds. So, I'll give anything a fair shot. But, do I want this Schumacher Cut? Yes, I will say it. To Warner Brothers and to AT&T. Release the Schumacher cut. And if you believe in that hashtag, folks, comment down below. And comment down below with your thoughts and ideas or anything. Would you like to see the Schumacher cut? Does anything that I talked about here spark your imagination saying, hmm, 
Ambassador brings up an interesting idea. Maybe I want to get behind this too. So if you want to see the Schumacher cut, start hashtagging it out. Release the Schumacher cut of uh, Batman Forever. So, well, folks, that's my thoughts on this uh, on this matter. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you come across it and you like it, hit smash that uh, like button. Share this out with your friends. And if you're not a subscriber and this is your first time to my channel, welcome to the Ambassadorial Wing. I hope you enjoy your time here. I hope you enjoy what I'm putting out. So, uh, just a quick update. Um, I will have a, another installment of Afternoons with the Ambassador this Wednesday afternoon at 2 p.m. Central with my friends Adega Outlaw and Mounds of Elysium as we uh, continue and slash conclude our review of Babylon 5 Season 1 Chrysalis. So, y'all have a great day. And until next time, this is the Ambassador signing off.